This is your WCIA3 forecast first. Sponsored by Mattex. Heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. And good evening to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. A beautiful, crisp, cool night across central Illinois. We can see it from all of our awesome cameras here on the Flory America weather iNet from Champaign all the way to Decatur and Springfield, Charleston, Mattoon, all looking good. No issues out there tonight. We've got generally clear skies. A few clouds trying to work their way in after what was a very sunny day today. Temperatures here tonight are starting to cool down a little bit. We're back down to the upper 40s in Springfield at 49. Still 50 in Champaign and 51 degrees in the Effingham area. Well, let's get you your hour by hour as we work our way into the day tomorrow. Take a look at this. We're going to start out in the upper 30s to begin the day. Plenty of sunshine. Try to make it run close to 60 again, but it is going to be a little bit cooler out there. We're going to talk about how maybe some areas could see some frost later this week. That's coming up. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. There are now two vaccines Americans can get to fight COVID-19. What Johnson & Johnson recipients had to say after that option was pulled. Plus, the vaccination campaign continues across the state while focus of the race is against variants. And a dangerous weekend in Champaign County turned deadly once again. What mayors are now pleading for. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. We're just hitting the pause button to make sure that we are doing what we want to do, and that's really protect people from getting COVID with the vaccine. Hospitals in central Illinois are temporarily stopping distribution of one COVID-19 vaccine. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. And I'm Jessica Coons. The CDC is recommending the Johnson & Johnson vaccine rollout be stopped for now after some people experienced rare blood clots. It has some who received that vaccine concerned, but not everyone. WCI3's Bryce Beeman joins us now. Bryce, you heard from a lot of people tonight. I put out a post on our WCIA Facebook page. I asked people who received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine if they felt concerned or not. Over 250 people commented. Most said they were not concerned. It just depends on how people's body reacts to different things, I guess. The CDC and FDA are recommending a pause in the use of Johnson & Johnson vaccine. They're investigating after six women between the ages of 18 and 48 received a blood clot. One woman died. Their symptoms all developed 6 to 13 days after getting the shot. The number of blood clots that we found with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine that have been correlated or reported really are one in a million right now. Officials say there have only been six cases reported out of more than 6.8 million doses delivered. But that still is enough to cause some concern for people who have received the one-dose shot. I like my odds, yes, but it, it, it only takes one. <laughs> Um, and I don't want to be that one. Scott Harding has high blood pressure and is asthmatic. He says it's a bit concerning to hear about the vaccine being pulled. Moving forward, he just wants to be on the safe side. I have set up an, uh, an appointment with my doctor uh, just to kind of uh, jumpstart some uh, routine chest x-rays. Meanwhile, Jenny Strebing says she isn't too worried and says she doesn't see a difference between the vaccines. When it comes down to it, she'd rather deal with the vaccine side effects than the virus itself. I would rather get the shot with everything that's been going on. I'd rather take that extra precaution. Both Strebing and Harding had side effects for about two days. Both say getting a vaccine is worth it and are hopeful for the future. When you have an emergency authorized vaccine versus a you know normal recourse, uh, how vaccines are normally approved, it can get mercury. Health officials are pausing the distribution out of an abundance of caution. The CDC is meeting tomorrow to discuss this. Back to you. And I'm sure we'll have updates after that. Bryce, thank you. Illinois was given more than 760,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. More than 290,000 had been administered. Only 4% of the vaccines administered in the state have been Johnson & Johnson. How the loss of a vaccine will impact vaccination efforts, however, remains to be seen. Right now, it's kind of the, the battle between the variants and the vaccines. And we're sure hoping that the vaccines win. That's the thinking of the medical community as Illinois opened vaccinations to everyone in the state 16 and older. It comes as the pool of variants is expanding, meaning those vaccines are being put to the test again. The B117 we had several of, and that's uh, the dominant strain from what we're seeing now. 
B117, or the UK strain, is being identified across the state. It's not alone. Most notably, the P1, the Brazilian variant, we had 16 positives there, and 15 of them were from the state of Illinois. Dr. Aaron Rossi, CEO of Redditus Laboratories outside Peoria, says his lab recently identified four variants in Illinois. Among them? We also saw the uh, Santa Clara variant, the B427-429, uh, that's the California uh, variant that we've been uh, closely watching. Um, and those were basically clustered or, you know, cluttered all over the state. Those findings are no surprise to Dr. Mark Shelton, the chief clinical officer at HSHS. It will not shock me at all to find the Brazilian or the L.A. or the South African variant uh, uh, show up in some of the data. Dr. Shelton says this explains why infections and hospitalizations are up. We know that the variant uh, uh, virus uh, COVID viruses are more contagious. And we know that a lot of people haven't gotten vaccinated yet. So despite increases in hospitalizations, ICU and ventilator use are stable. So we have not seen uh, any real significant increase in the need or demand for ICU beds. Uh, we are seeing a slight increase uh, in the need for our medical beds but it hasn't been at all overwhelming. I think that is almost entirely attributable to the uh, of high vaccine uh, uh, ratios in the people over 65. Treatment has also improved for COVID patients. When the, the first wave hit, the uh, uh, mortality was upwards of 25 to 30% in the hospitalized patients. And with improved care protocols, the proning, the changes in oxygen delivery models, the uh, bamlanifimab, the uh, remdesivir, the steroid, appropriate steroid use, all of those things, the answer is E, all of the above. They all contributed to improved mortality down to around 9 or 10%. Additionally, Dr. Shelton says COVID is here to stay. Everybody that's not been vaccinated or hasn't had COVID and recovered is going to ultimately get it one way or the other. Carl Foundation President Lynn Barnes agrees. We'll never squelch this, I don't think. You know, it's probably a virus that's with us, you know, but but I think our, our science has really shown us that, that we'll be able to wrap our arms around it and keep it at bay. Dr. Shelton does expect this fourth wave to materialize in Illinois, attributing it to the timing of spring break, increased travel, and students returning to the classroom and playing fields. He says with the variant's arrival and being more contagious, it'll impact the younger population more. And we are seeing an increase in hospitalizations across Illinois. More than 2,000 people have been admitted. The positivity rate has also increased to 5%. Nearly 3,200 new infections were announced along with 17 more deaths. Also up, some good news, the number of people vaccinated across the state. More than 23% are fully inoculated and more than 100,000 received a dose yesterday. The seven-day average in the state is almost 133,000. Other news tonight, a third person is dead after a violent weekend in Champaign County. Issa Musa died in the hospital last night. He was shot while letting a friend's dog outside at a home in Urbana. No arrests have been made in any of this weekend's several shootings. Champaign and Urbana's mayors are calling for help from the community. There are people who who are just begging for for answers. And one of the biggest questions they have is who did it and why. I think the people who are involved in the gun violence aren't understanding. It's their friends, their neighbors. It's, you know, maybe even one of their family members who is going to end up being a victim. If you know anything about these shootings, they want you to reach out to police. And if you want to stay anonymous, you can contact Crime Stoppers. Now a follow up from Champaign schools. School resource officers are staying, but board members say it may not be permanent. Officers will be assigned to schools for another year. The school board says this decision comes after the wave of gun violence in CU and they will revisit the SRO contracts next year. A mobile home in Rantoul is destroyed after a fire tonight. Crews arrived to find the home fully engulfed in flames. Neighbors say the owner left about five minutes before that fire started. The fire marshal will be investigating. First responders are called to a gas leak at a Marathon gas station outside Muhammad earlier tonight. The police chief says a teenager with a learner's permit was driving with his parent. Ameren says that vehicle hit a gas regulator station, which regulates gas pressure 
on a natural gas line. No customers were impacted and Ameren's in the process of fixing it. We have an update on a road closure in Danville. Work on an overpass there is expected to start tomorrow. Seminary Street by Junction is shut down because that overpass needs repairs. There's a hole in the decking that's allowing gravel to fall through. But Norfolk Southern Railroad says the bridge is structurally sound and past inspection. That street could reopen sometime next week. And some in Tolono will be boiling water after a water main break this afternoon. Crews were running cable TV wires when they accidentally hit the main near Boone and Larman. They tried draining the water, but neighbors say there's nowhere for it to go. There's no place to drain the water main. I mean, we got one water main here for the whole two blocks, and it's been like this. I've tried for over 40 years to get it changed. If, when it floods, it circles my whole house. Tonight, the village said water has been restored, but that boil order is still in effect for that area. Water will be shut off again at noon tomorrow for permanent repairs. The village says they will notify people when the boil order is over. Several players have left the Illinois basketball team from where they're getting a high-profile recruit. Plus, summer is usually filled with dozens of events across the area, but planning them this year could still be tricky. Kevin, you mentioned it right off the top. It's cool, a little crisp outside, but not anything that's wholly unexpected. No, this is actually typical for uh, the middle of April here. We're going to see more of that. And actually, it may get a little bit teetering on the edge of, okay, come on now, where is spring? Today's highs, though, were pretty nice. We hit 62. That is right on target. But we're going back below average. We're going to talk about when we could see some frost and maybe that other dreaded word that I won't say, at least as of right now, coming up.